If you're wanting better looking video, you know how important color grading is and getting that final finish look that makes your films look big budget. In this video, you're getting my beginner color grading crash course to set your films apart using the built-in tools found inside of Final Cut Pro. Getting a high-end look is exhilarating, but it's frustrating when you end up with muddy looking video in the color grade. You either don't know where to start or what the proper steps are to follow. You try slapping on a LUT only to find that shots don't match and LUTs don't work in every situation. Well, the good news is you're gonna be able to overcome that with this easy step-by-step -step guide. And if you're able to follow along and you like this video, there's something even cooler that I'm saving until the end that makes getting cinematic video even easier and faster with a tool that we've developed. All right, so let's get into it. The main questions and pitfalls most filmmakers have when starting their grading journey is, should I record in log? And if I do, how do I make flat images look rich and cinematic? How do I get the right exposure and white balance? How do you actually match two shots together because of lighting changes or because two different cameras were used on the same shoot? How do I create not only a popular look, but the right look for my video? And finally, how do I do this in the shortest amount of time without having to scour YouTube for good grading tutorials? Well, you don't need to look any further and you're gonna get all of that right here on an actual project that we're going to grade together step-by-step -step using my proven big budget workflow. Here in Final Cut, we have the viewer, timeline, and then specter panel where we'll be adding the color effects. We currently don't see the video scopes and they're beneficial because they'll tell us if an image is too bright or too dark, if the skin tones look right, everything that we pretty much need to know. They'll even help us with matching shots. So to bring them up, we'll go to Window, Workspaces, then Color and Effects. This will give us the video scopes. I'm gonna change the view to show the three scopes that I use the most. Those are the Luma Waveform, RGB Overlay Waveform, and the Vector Scope. The Luma Waveform lets us correct for exposure. If I overlay an image on top of the waveform, you can see that the trace, the stuff you see here, actually corresponds left to right with the image, with the shadows at the bottom and the highlights at the top. The RGB Overlay Waveform is helpful for correcting white bounce issues. It reads the same as the Luma Waveform, but it shows the color channels separated as red, green, and blue. This makes it simple to spot imbalances if either the image is too cool or too warm. We'll see that as red or blue elevated above the other three channels. And when all three channels line up, they show as white, meaning we have white balance in our image. And the vector scope corresponds directly with the color wheel. I've overlaid it here for convenience. It shows what colors are in the image as well as their saturation. The further the trace extends from the center of the scope, the more saturated or vivid the colors are. Once our scopes are set up, we'll start first with our base correction step. What that means is going from a flat log image to a contrasty saturated one that's exposed properly with the right amount of brightness and the right white balance or color temperature. You can think of this as how the scene appeared on set to the naked eye, so the base correction is really our starting point. To begin, we'll start by selecting a hero shot. This can be any shot that's a good representation of the scene we are grading. This one shows all three characters and their surroundings like trees, the sky, and even part of the house. We'll then go to the inspector panel, click the color correction icon, and choose a color effect from the drop down menu. We usually start with the color wheels. To the right of each color wheel, you'll find the exposure control. The shadows control affects the darkest parts of the image, the highlights affects the brightest parts of the image, and the midtones control affects everything else in between. The fourth wheel is the master control, which adjusts the entire image, and there are some circumstances where you'd use it. Now this is a log image. I tend to capture in log as most other filmmakers tend to do. And the reason for this is because log captures more dynamic range. In other words, more image detail is there in the shadowy and bright areas. If you choose to capture in a standard profile, that's okay. You can still color grade your footage and it can be a shortcut, but log will give you more detail and options in post. So to make this look right, we'll adjust the shadows while watching the waveform. We want to bring the trace of the shadows down until the darkest parts of the image sits right above zero. Then we'll bring up the highlights so the brightest parts of the trace sit right below the 100 IRE mark. Then I'll bring up the midtones just a bit. This gives us good contrast and exposure. Then we'll add some saturation with the master control to make it pop. And that's looking a lot better. 
Now, there is a quicker way of doing this. We'll delete the color wheels effect, go to the effects panel, and look for the custom LUT effect. If you have a log to rec someone on conversion LUT for your particular camera, you can apply it here to your footage. And if you're not sure which one would be a good one for your camera, you can check the camera manufacturer's website or do a Google search for a third-party LUT that does the conversion. And we have several conversion LUTs in our free 70 LUTs master collection, which also includes popular look LUTs and film emulations that emulate 35 millimeter film. I'll include a link to the 70 hand-picked color LUTs in the card above. In my particular case, this footage was captured on the red camera, so I'll apply the corresponding LUT and that's it. It's already looking much better. But as filmmakers, we're not perfect. Maybe our images are a little under or overexposed. White balance is not exactly on point. So these are the fixes that we need to make as part of the base correction. So to perfect this, I'll add a color wheels effect and make sure to position the color wheels effect above the custom LUT effect. Now, why am I doing this? Well, the reason is log footage contains more information and after the LUT is applied, we have less information to work with, which is why we want to do any base correction or fixes before the log to rec 79 conversion, which is anything above in the stack. Okay, does that make sense? If you have any questions about that, you can leave them in the comments. Okay, our characters are looking a little dark, so I'll bring the midtones up because skin tones usually live in the middle range of the waveform and we'll bring the highlights up a bit just below the 100 IRE mark. Then looking at the RGB overlay waveform, you can see the blue channel is above the others, meaning the image has a bluish tint. This is considered a color temperature or white balance issue, and a lot of people will try to fix this with the temperature and tint sliders. Now that's not wrong, but there is a better way as the sliders affect the image in a global way, pushing tones into the shadows. So a better way is to use the highlights wheel as it affects the tonal range in a top-down fashion, the way that light affects the environment in a top-down way. So we'll grab the center puck of the color wheels and push the highlights towards yellow until they turn white. And voila, problem solved. Another issue I'm noticing is reddish skin tones, but let's make sure that's the case. To do that, we'll go to the effects panel, masks, and add a draw mask effect. We'll draw a mask to isolate the girl's face. And this way, all that we're seeing in the scopes are the values for her face. Looking at the vector scope, see this line? This is the flesh line, so the trace representing the skin tones should generally align with it. That's not the case here with the trace pointing towards red. To fix this, we'll use what's called a secondary or an isolated color correction. For that, we can add a hue saturation color effect, make sure to position it above the custom LUT effect, and go to the hue versus hue curve. We'll click over the girl's face and two points show up in the color spectrum, isolating the red tones. We'll then click on the center point and drag down a bit to lean those red hues more towards yellow. And looking at the vector scope, you can see how the trace aligns now better with the flesh line. We then just disable the draw mask effect and the skin tones are looking fantastic. Once we're happy with our hero shot, it's time to apply the same correction to the other shots in the scene. So I'll select the clip Hit Command C to copy, select the other clips in the scene, and go to the Edit menu, choose Paste Attributes from the drop down menu, and make sure that the color wheels, Hoover Sat Curves, and Custom LUT Effect are checked, and then click Paste. This copies the correction and gives us a good starting point to our other clips. But you will see that we have some matching issues. For instance, this clip looks a little darker and cooler, and this other clip doesn't match at all because it was captured on a different camera. So we're now ready for the second step, which is shot matching. We're gonna set this up in a side-by-side -side view with a comparison viewer so we can see both images and their traces in the waveform at the same time, and this will make matching much easier. To do this, let's go to Window, Show in Workspace, then Comparison Viewer. This opens a new window to the left of the viewer where our reference image will show. Now the scopes are showing between the viewers, and I don't like that. So let's change their position by enabling the vertical layout. Now let's enable the scopes for the comparison viewer and set them to vertical layout too. This gives us a more organized view where we can compare them more easily. Now, if we needed to compare our shots to the last frame of the outgoing or the first frame of the incoming shot, just make sure the comparison viewer is set to timeline and click on previous edit or next edit. In this case, since we want to use our hero shot as a reference, let's change the comparison viewer to saved mode. Move the playhead to the frame we want as a reference and click Save Frame. Now if you save several frames, you can open up the frame browser to select the right one. 
Let's close the frame browser and move the playhead back to the third clip. To match the traces better, we'll bring up the general exposure using the control on the right side of the master wheel. The hero shot is a little warmer, so using the RGB overlay waveform as a guide, we'll move the highlights a little towards yellow. That's it, we have a nice looking match. Now let's move the playhead to the shot from a different camera. This clip comes from an Ari Alexa, so we'll reset the color wheels and Huber sat effect and change the custom LUT to the correct Alexa log C to Rec 709 LUT. Then jumping back to the color wheels effect, we'll use the scopes as a guide to dial in a similar color balance. Then match the skin tones better with the Huber's hue curves. And with that, we're done with our base correction and color matching. Now that the hard work is done, it's time for the fun part, and that's adding a great or cinematic look that fits with the mood of the story. I'm gonna show you two ways to apply the same look on top of all these clips, and this will save you a lot of time and ensure that you get the best quality across the board. The first way is we can select all the clips, right click, and select new compound clip. Give it a name and click OK. Now when we make color adjustments to the compound clip, it's going to apply the same correction to all the clips uniformly. The second way is using an adjustment layer, and although this isn't a feature supported in Final Cut natively, not to worry, I got your back. To snag the free adjustment layer we've created for you, I'll include a link for it in the card above. This will take you to a YouTube video where you can download it and include some instructions on how to install it. But basically, what this lets you do when you drag it over top of your clips is that any adjustments or effects that we apply to the adjustment layer will affect all the clips underneath it. Isn't that awesome? This is a really flexible way to work, which is why a lot of people turn to this solution. Now for the first part of the look, I'll add a color curves effect to the adjustment layer, and this allows us to make complex adjustments to the exposure and color balance. Now just a quick crash course on the way this works. The bottom point adjusts the shadows, the top point adjusts the highlights, and we can make as many points along the curve in between to fine tune the contrast. We can use the Luma curve for overall exposure adjustments or do individual adjustments to the red, green, or blue channels. In this case, we don't want to affect the highlights or the shadows too much, so we'll create contrast in between these areas known as the undertones and overtones. I'll make a point here in the undertones and drag it down. This improves the density of the undertones but makes the image look a little too dark. So let's add another point in the overtones and drag it up. There, that looks nice. Now we have much richer contrast and this gives us the signature S curve associated with film. Next, I want all this green to look an ochre color like it's fall, so to do that we'll add a Huber saturation effect and use the Huber's hue curve to isolate the green range and move the middle point up to introduce red. Then I would love the sky to have a bit of a teal tone, so we'll move the blue range up too. Moving to the Huber saturation curve, we'll bring the saturation in the greens up and the red and orange tones down so the skin tones look a little more muted. If I toggle the grade off and then back on again, you can see a big difference and what a great look this is. As a final touch, I want to apply one of the LUTs from the 70 LUTs Master Collection, which you can download for free from Color Grading Central. Here's a link for them in the card above. To apply a LUT, we'll apply a custom LUT effect to the adjustment layer, and then click the drop down to select the drive LUT. Now at first it's too strong, but that's okay because we can dial it back to taste using the mix slider. The LUT gives us the finished look that we needed. Now let's play this whole thing back. This gives us a cinematic big budget look like it's from a movie. Now this is something that you can do on your own by following each of these steps. Now at the beginning, I promised to reveal to you something really cool that makes getting a cinematic look even easier and faster. A shortcut to a big budget look is with Cinema Grade, designed for filmmakers who want to achieve a high end finish look in Final Cut, but without getting lost in all the buttons and functions of the built in tools. And I think when you see how this plugin works, you'll see how much faster and easier this is to getting a professional look without having to specialize as a colorist. To get started, just drag it onto all your clips in Final Cut, launch the viewer, and now you can grade right directly in the image in a big, beautiful viewer by simply clicking and dragging. Rather than having to know what shadows are and what slider to reach for, you can just click on the dark areas and drag up to restore detail. 
Turning on the false color view, you can see blown out or clip detail in the highlights shown as red. So you can simply just click and drag down to recover the detail in the bright areas. Changing colors can be done easily by clicking and dragging to change the color of the sky, reducing the color to nothing, or darkening and lightening it. When it comes time to matching shots, you can group them together with the first clip selected being your hero shot, and then in the shot matching view, you're able to copy corrections from the hero clip to the other clips in the group and further refine them in the side-by-side -side viewer. In the final grading page, you're able to apply a final look grade with the tools and get real-time previews of LUTs as thumbnails rather than only seeing them from a list in Final Cut. This is a huge drawback in Final Cut that you're not able to see what they actually do until applying them. If you'd like to learn more about Cinema Grade that's purpose-built to get a high-end cinema look three times faster, you'll find a link for it in the description below. Well, I hope this crash course makes a lot of sense and makes a difference in the look of your films. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of our next tutorial. Let's make cinema quality video. <laughs>